Good evening, everyone. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Ming Joy Washington. I recently joined the team of Solo Contemporary, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the closing reception and artist talk of On Black. Thank you for being here. This event is kindly sponsored by Apartment 2B, who provided the furniture, Thorn and Raised, who provided the plants, Pomp and Whimsy with the signature cocktail tonight, Liquid Death, your water, and Violet Noir for equipment. Thank you to all of our sponsors. It is my pleasure to welcome tonight's moderator, Tara King. Tara King oversees the marketing, branding, and community partnerships of Hilltop Coffee and Kitchen. She sits on the board of Solo Contemporary and comes with a colorful background. Her multifaceted experience in entrepreneurship, entertainment, music, fashion, and marketing helps creative entrepreneurs realize their visions. In collaboration with Sola, King has expanded the walls of the gallery, making Hilltop Coffee and Kitchen a rotating exhibition, exhibition space through Art on Slauson. This new project helps bolster artistic careers by making fine art accessible to the South LA neighborhood. Tara loves art, music, and community. She thrives in creating opportunities and spaces for creative collaboration. It is my pleasure to turn the mic to Tara, who will introduce our artists and speakers for the evening. Thank you. How is everybody doing? Great. Great. Let's give it up one more time for me, because. Yes. Yes. About this individual, she's like phenomenal. Let's go, Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay, so first, I'm going to introduce Nefertiti's Bowman, executive director of Solo Contemporary and curator of On Black. Nefertiti Bowman is a facilitator by both both nature and profession. She has over 14 years of experience in the arts public and educational programming, special projects, and development. Bowman has curated memorable exhibitions and experiences, spearheaded collaborations, and has fostered relationships that contribute to institutional advancements and cultural change. Oh, that's right. Recent projects including, include developing Kalita Rawls studio operations and project management of the Artist Mural Commission at SoFi Stadium the Mandy and Lynn Einstein Visiting Art Series at Otis College of Art and Design, and Sola's 2021 exhibitions, Kindred Technology and Like Water, which the mayor of West Hollywood recognized. Everybody give it up. Wow. For this wow. Next up is Shawana Davis. This Shawana Davis was born in Tulare, California in 1977. She is currently based in Los Angeles. As a self-taught artist, Davis has found comfort in expressing her artistic talents during the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to her first published works in Wild Boys Magazine and participation in the Google Arts, Google Arts and Culture online exhibition, curating the end of the world. Her practice enter centers black joy through mixed media techniques such as wet on wet painting, collage, and oil stick drawings. Her influences include her friends, black history, abstraction, and Afro futures. In March 2021, Davis exhibited her series Surviving in Color at Hilltop Coffee and Kitchen as part of Adam's Lost. <laughs> Next up, we have Miss Lauren Levi. Woo! Lauren Levi has cataloged her experience in society and culture through art for the past seven years. She shares her perspective as a single mother and a black woman in America by promoting the embrace of self-expression. She works in a digital medium with vibrant colors, intricate patterns, and a visually stunning aesthetic. 
Her practice imparts contemporary social critique and, a and is strongly influenced by black activism, feminism, and hip hop culture. Levi believes that love and art have a tremendous power to affect positivity and beauty even during life's most difficult moments. And last, but definitely not least, the man of the hour. <laughs> definitely the man of the hour, Joseph Brandon. Thank you. Joseph Brandon is a mixed media artist and designer from New Orleans, Louisiana. Yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> Uptown. <laughs> Baby. He established himself as a premier portrait muralist as part of Yaya Young Aspirations Young Artists organization. His experience as a, pastry, as a pastry chef, firefighter, and oil refinery technician add to his artistic practice. His diverse mediums, including painting, sculpture, installation, toys, and collectibles, influenced by a commitment to protect and preserve the inner child while attempting to heal the psychological effects of black life under systematic, systemic oppression. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Yeah. has a BFA in toy design from Otis College of Art and Design. He lives and works in Los Angeles. Thank you. Okay, so this is a big deal, I feel like, for us here in South LA, on Slauson, not too far from Crenshaw, this neighborhood. I didn't grow up here, um, but I've lived in LA for almost, like, almost I don't know how long. Is it almost, it's like, it's like 20 years. We can know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I have such a love for this neighborhood and this community. There's so much rich culture here, so many talented individuals. And um, I'm just super excited to share space with you guys tonight. It's a beautiful turnout. And thank you guys so much for your patience. And as we're getting this together this evening. So I just want to jump right into it. On Black is... The idea is looking at art from a different gaze. Mm -hmm. On black walls, we typically see art on white walls. Yes. And Nefertiti, talk to us about what this exhibition means to you, what your process was in curating all of the art, and your own personal connection to On Black. Definitely. Um, so, uh, as the executive director and curator of SOLA, when I acquired the space and started, here last March, um, and I was thinking about what I wanted to do in February of 2022, um, and something, I like I had a dream, and that dream was like, okay, the walls need to be black. You know, we're on, on black, for me, is this journey that we're all on. We're all on this black journey of, of knowing who we are, of accepting our, our blackness, of owning it. And so, um, having been here in LA almost six years from Chicago, um, having had these mul multitude of experiences, I have a multifaceted background um, when it comes to the art world, but also too, you know, um, worked in medicine, worked in, you know, entertainment, you know, ran nightclubs in Chicago, did all of these crazy things to be here right now. And, you know, my mom was from Inglewood in Chicago, so this like, and just being on this strip in Slauson and for us to be able to do this, this for me, in um, wanting to curate this show and wanting the walls to be black from an artistic perspective, when we come to the history of art, it's always been on white walls. And as we move through space as black people, we we're always in conversation in white spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do we, you know, it's an uncomfortable thing for us. You know, it's uncomfortable. Um, so having this ownership that I have now, this unapologetic, like my hair, I'm not straightening it no more. My All right. name is a never tea. All right. You know, it ain't a deal. That's my middle name. But, <laughs> you know, it's these things of like, you know, what we felt like we had to do to make white spaces comfortable for us to be able to exist in. And so having this conversation with, with all of these artists works and, you know, I keep saying this on and on, even this show and how it developed, like this was not what I, what I had in mind. I'm a Virgo, so I stick to the script. Mm. But script and, and universe and spirit told me no. All this right. is what it's going to be, you know, uh, and so uh, I just appreciate, you know, all of the artists being, that are a part of this show that allowed me to use, you know, to use their work as, as my voice. You know, um, every one of these pictures, 
every one of these images, every one of these, just how the intricacy of all of their work really speaks to just the, the lens and the lane of just my experience, professionally, spiritually, emotionally, as a woman, being black in this space and what I'm going through on a day-to-day -day basis. And the fact that although we may be different and we come from different places, each and every one of their narratives, we have experienced something. Right. And all of us here, although we may be different, come from different places, you know, and look at things from a different view, we all, ex we all have experienced some of the same things of being on this black journey and, being in, and becoming accepting of who we are. And that's so important. So that's what this is about, you know, um, each, each image on this black wall. What is that? That's a different conversation that we're gonna have amongst one another. And so that was really important for me to be able to do this. So this is literally like, this is a birthing of me becoming. And, this, right. and all of this work really just really speaks to volume of just where I, I have been able to just, you know, position myself in this, this art world that was not for us, that we were pushed out of, but we created, we developed. You mm -hmm. know, this comes from black culture. You know, it stems from histories and centuries of our relatives, of our ancestors. And so, you know, for me to be able to do this and to hold space and to have you guys hold space for me, with me and for these artists to trust me to be able to do this for them, it is just, it's like, I, yeah, it's like I'm gonna be in tears in a second. You know, I don't do that, I don't do that. But yeah, like I just, like this, the reception of this show and where I know things are going for us is, is just, it's, it's, it's paramount. And, and thank you. Thank you all. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can you guys all hear me? Yes. Okay, is the mic better or is this fine? Okay, um, so with that being said, and Nefertiti, all the background, all your thoughts and you know, vision for this, um, I wanna ask a question to the artist, which is how do you feel your work interacts differently um, with the black walls? I think for me, since my signature is this like really bright colors, you know, um, the white walls have always kind of diluted my art and my perception. You know, everything that I do with my art is always, you know, in the in the lens of a black woman. So you know, I see black when I paint, even though it's colorful. Like my objective pieces are always black. It's black women. It's black culture. It's blackness. So the black walls to me just tie into my brand and tie into my signature. Um, my signature eye of like what I want my art to look like. So for me, it was very natural to see the black walls because to me, it ties into what I already see. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like it just kind of like gave me like the perfect like um, canvas of where to put my art because that's what I already see anyway. The white walls are kind of like, you know, it's not really my thing. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm not really like a white wall girl, but you know, it is what it is. But um, yeah, that's yeah. me. Um, hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, this is my art. This is my coming out party with art. And so um, all of my art was created online. So I had never hung my art up on a wall, right? So I had never seen it anywhere. But anytime I was creating, it was always for us. And I always saw like the black aesthetic, like my auntie's living room, my mama's couch, you know. So having my art on black walls just feels like the air that I breathe. Like this is where it's yeah. supposed to be. Right. This is the, the way that I want it represented. And I always wanted to use vibrant colors with black because I feel like we stand out wherever we go. Right. So now that, you know, when I walked in and saw my work on a black wall, I was like, oh, this, this all makes sense. Like, yeah. this must have been doing this a long time ago. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for me, uh, visually, it, it definitely changes the work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, black absorbs light. Mm -hmm. So um, conceptually, it, it healed, it healed me. Mm -hmm. It really did. Um, it's amazing that she was brave enough to, to take this step. Yeah. I mean, people don't know the, the, um, the, the, the sleep she lost because to, to get this, you know, and I really appreciate the, the courage that it took for her to do that. It was really healing to me. And these pieces, they all look like they belong here. You know, in my opinion, 
every black art gallery in the country should have a room dedicated to black walls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so for me, I'm, I'm blessed and yeah, thank yeah. you. And I mean, you bring up a really good point because um, we think about black walls, okay? We have white walls and we're just gonna paint them black, but it actually, we don't have to go into depth, but it was a very controversial thing yeah. to paint these walls black, even in this small gallery in a predominantly black neighborhood. So um, that just speaks volumes to black, uh, yeah, blackness. I was, I was told that if the walls go black, there's a fear that they won't go back white. Oh my goodness. Yes. So that's deeper than the paints. All right now. It's deeper than the paints. So if we paint the walls black, we're in fear that they won't go back white. <laughs> there you go, right there. So it's deeper than the paint. And so, yeah, we have to talk about these nuances of, of space. Yep. and what it is and how we are now showing up for each other. We're showing That's up right. for what we're supposed to be doing together That's and right. moving in this space. Tribe, ancestry, that's what it's about. These black walls mean so much more than, and it's more than me. And so that is why this is so important that, you know, like he said, I lost sleep. I didn't sleep for a whole month, like did not sleep. So it's really important that, you know, this right here, this is just the beginning because I, I'm, I'm breaking down barriers and breaking down walls within this, within, within this industry, That's you know, right. unapologetically. And, you know, right. people mad, <laughs> but I don't care. All right. So, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so let's get into the works and how we see black figures, black faces, our, all the things that make us incredible and who we are. Um, there's an art historian, uh, Darby English, and he suggests that the flood of black figuration flattens the complexity of black life. With this in mind, this is to all of you, how do your works, all featuring black subjects, expand representation? Anybody who, I mean, we don't have to go down line, but anything that comes um, to mind first. You know, my whole idea of painting black women is that I never want to paint anything with a straight line because I don't have straight lines yeah. and I want us to be full full breasts long breasts big hips long you know long faces big ears little ears you know thick hair you know because I think that the gaze usually of how we're painted is either it's so make sure she has a flat stomach I don't have a flat stomach you know what I mean I got a belly so I want to make sure that the little girl that might see the picture of a girl with a belly it's normalized, you know? So yeah. me, personally, I want to be a reflection. Like, I want it to be so simple that it's like, wow, I saw myself yesterday in your work, you know? So, you know, anyone that takes part in just seeing the work and they take it with them or they take a photo of it, you're really embracing, like, something that's really unapologetic, the colors and everything. So, you know, I love it. I love that we're showing who we really are through our own pens, our own paper, our own utensils, you know what I'm saying? So I think I answered that. <laughs> you 100% did. I mean, yeah, I think this is Juana's work right behind us here. And I definitely see myself in your work. Uh, you know, I think a lot of women in this space can definitely see themselves in your work. It's so important that representation full figured our, our bodies. And that's, that's another part of this question is like, our portraiture has been commodified, you know? And I mean, we see people who are trying to emulate body types. Don't talk about what we've been talking about on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, there are people who want to look like black women. It's a trend right now, you know? And, and um, black culture around the world is, is um, currency. So, um, yeah, I love, I love what you said about your work and, and just from the physical aspect. Do you have something? Yeah. Like I think for me, I've always been unapologetically black in every single room I'm in. Like, it's never been something that, you know, I've ever felt like I needed to like dilute or dumb myself down. So when it comes to my art, it was only like right for me to reflect how proud I am to be a black woman. I've never not been proud to be a black woman. I was thankfully raised in a household that, you know, being black was celebrated, being black was like, 
that's what you are, that's what you always are, you love it, you embrace it, and that's what it is. You have no other choice to do anything else. So when it came to my art, I've always had, you know, not only not only a passion to just have, to be a, a black woman in art, because like that's already a thing, you know, like being representation of just a black woman in art. And I just always felt like I wanted my art to be able to speak to people that might not be in art spaces, but you know, can actually, you know, receive the message and receive the art. And you know, there are people out there who don't have access to art the way that other people do. You know, like I didn't grow up seeing a lot of black art, you know what I mean? So I just always look at it in a way of like being a vessel to pull people in, you know, like as like a starting point of like, oh, that looks pretty, you know, and then dig deeper into like the message and things like that. So yeah, that's been that was that was deep. I'm sorry I was so caught up into what she was saying. <laughs> You're you gonna have to read the question to me again, because I'm I'm really panicking to it. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the question is, how, how do your works expand black representation? Oh, man. So it's, for me, it's, it's, it's a conversation that I've really been having with um, myself for a long time. Since I was six years old, I've been an artist. And uh, since I was 12, I've been a professional artist. Um, and started off painting for, wh for white people. Uh, drawing for them um, so they can, uh, I would do drawings and they would paint the canvas and I would get paid for it. So for me to get a chance to do things the way I want to do them or the way I see them and, and, and even get educated and, and, and say like, just because you say so, that's why. You know, so for me, it's, it's a way to say, well, this is why I'm doing it, but I don't just want to tell you why. I, I have a lot of white friends, and I tell them all the time, um, they get to a point where I have to say, I'm not here to educate you. I'm here to, I'm here to, 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 to get it to the kids that's coming behind me so they don't have to put up with you. It's not for you to understand. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love the conversation, you know, you saying you have a conversation with yourself, because I definitely feel like it's reflected in your work over here, off to the right. I mean, it's such a deep conversation, you know, about what it means to be a black man in America and society. I mean, I tell people all the time, I am a black woman. Um, my, my father is black, but my mother is Mexican and white. And I grew up in a single parent household. And early on when my parents were together, my dad, same like you, made me feel super proud to be black and, um, and my mom, you know, she loved me. She loved everything that I was. And so she taught me a lot about black history. And, you know, I think sometimes people who are not black think that, uh, that we have a chip on our shoulder, that we're looking for racism. Mm -hmm. And my mom didn't teach me that. My mom taught me about my culture. She taught me about Mexican culture. And I lived in a white world, so pretty much had all my bases covered. It wasn't, I wasn't looking for anybody to be you know, racist towards me or stereotypical towards me. But when I got into the world, my experience, I experienced myself as a black woman first. Yeah. And, and I, so I love that conversation that you have been having with yourself because it really reflects um, in the work, so. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. like that, that piece you're talking about, it, um, it's called Sincerely These Hands. Uh -huh. Son, protect yourself at all times. Uh -huh. And um, I made that piece after having a conversation with a friend of mine who was actually a descendant of, a, a cousin of Emmett Till. Wow. And um, it, you know, my, my son was graduating high school and that's, you know, we, we both love boxing and that's the number one rule in boxing and that's, that's our thing is protect yourself at all times, you know? So that's, that's, uh, that, that's again, that's me having that conversation. But like Neff said earlier, is is we all have that. Yeah. We all have those conversations, yeah. and you just you know like mm -hmm. your mother prepared you for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And from a curator's perspective, I think for me, you know, being able to be in this space as a black woman, you know, being in an executive role, like being in this art world, like being in the museum space, having worked in museums and educational institutions, it was my purpose to make sure that I was that representation for artists, for young people, you know, right. working at Otis, you know, being the mentor for the Black Student Union, you know, being able to get this, have this space, and my focus is to make sure that I am able to be that voice and that advocate 
to bring access for black and brown artists to be able to come and show their work and be able to be seen, yeah. you know, and that's super important for me and that's why I do this. Like, this is my, this is my calling. That's what I'm supposed to do is create space, you know, and to be that representation because we look at all these commercial galleries, they're repping all these black artists, but wow. they have no representation within the space of that, their gallery, you wow. know? And so they're taking up our spaces and they're taking up our narratives, but we, we have ownership to our narratives and that's super important that we need to be able to make sure that we keep that. And that's what this is for. And that's what I lend my voice and, and, and you know, what I'm doing for is to make sure that we can be able to do that. And to know that, you know, I am your voice. Like, I know artists, we, they sense it to you about they shit. <laughs> and that is okay. But I'm going to come and I'm going to be that barrier, you know, and have those conversations unapologetically and make sure that we can move through this, you know, with a manner that makes sense for us and make sure that we feel comfortable, you know. And for Shawana and Lauren, this is your first time. Yeah. You know, wow. in a gallery, like in a you That's know amazing. museum kind of gallery yeah. setting. Just take a moment so, for that, right? Yes, yes. That's why it's they trusted me. They trusted me with their vision and their work for this show. So I honor you. I thank you. I hold space for you, queen, queens, and thank you for that. Amazing. Okay, so let's let's dip into like now. This is what we're about to get in your business, you guys. <laughs> We've had conversations, so you guys should be ready for what I'm going to be asking you, Joseph Brandon. We we, we gonna ease into it. Okay. It is no, no, no. We, we're gonna oh, get into his right. process too. Yeah, right? I love my queen. Yeah, he's 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 cool. He's cool as a breeze. Okay. So, Lauren, it seems like fashion is a big part of your life. Oh yeah. Um, can you speak on the stylish? images that you create, the colorful images, yeah. the black women, and what is the significance? You touched on it a little bit, but like, let's take a deeper dive in like, what does it mean to see the hair and the nails and all of the, your personal style innovation, but right. black women's <laughs> style innovation right. in general? Um, for me, you know, since I didn't grow up in like an art accessible home, like, you know, my home, my, art, my parents weren't into art, you know? So my first form of expression was fashion, you know what I mean? That is how I express myself, you know? That was the first step of me, like, being able to um, speak before having to speak, you know what I mean? And the reason why I do, you know, love fashion so much, and it, it's, it's solely for me, like, <laughs> once I, like, I love that you guys you love it, but it <laughs> it's solely for me because, um, I like to speak before, like I like to walk in a room and be able to like speak before I need to actually speak, you know? So when it comes to fashion, you know, like I always knew that like, I've always been in a color theory, you know, when I had Barbies, I hated the clothes. So <laughs> like the Barbie clothes were like, ah, oh, just uh, like, I don't like the colors, I don't like the style. So I made my own Barbie clothes. And my mom was like, oh, you're onto something, you know? And I was like, really? But um, it just started with Barbie clothes. And then I started like just, picking out my own clothes and then like I didn't even know like I was like a fashion person until other people told me <laughs> other people kind of told me and I was just like oh okay you know I'll roll with it but um fashion was my first step of expression it's like always going to be something that like I use as a tool to just like express myself when I'm not able to with my art so that's why it's such a big thing for me you know I do it just for expression like it's it's a creative outlet for me to be honest like that's it like yeah I love that I love uh and that's something that we do well right like yeah. in terms of like fashion and and putting things together uh, you know some of us didn't grow up in artistic homes like you said yeah. but some of us also didn't grow up with much you yeah, know and sure. I mean even I remember in my home is like my mom would always bring me she would just go shopping for me like dollar items she, like she would find like on the sales rack and stuff right. like that I'd be like I don't want to wear it and she'd be like just put it on and then I like put it on I have to swag it out you know yeah, and I feel like absolutely. that's that's an innate thing that we all have to do it's like you don't want to get clowned when you go into school you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean so how do I sure. use what I got to like make myself look good or whatever it is that I'm trying to express and I have a friend also like I, I know that people think that like fashion can sometimes be superficial yeah. But um, it, I think when you really, really understand that it is like a form of self-expression, it's yeah. like so liberating, yeah. you know, and, and it adds so much to um, 
to who you are, and we can totally see that reflected in your art. I can't point to your art right now, but you can't yeah, miss it. Yeah. You guys, if you know bright, anything about like, her, <laughs> it's very bright, you can't miss it. Yeah. Um, the only thing is like, just to leave off, is like, I always say, wear your clothes, don't let your clothes wear you, okay? Yeah, That's yeah, like, yeah. that is what I live by, so I just be like, is it wearing me or am I wearing it, you know? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, so Joseph, um, your work displays um, a range of media, uh, a bunch of themes, a lot of themes, a multitude of themes, if you will, um, from the sculptural works of Little Joe, who's, Little Joe's back there, yeah. right? And then there's a version of him over here. Yeah, the yes, line. he's a character. Do you wanna tell us about Little Joe? Where did he come from? Yeah, uh, Little Joe was a character I developed in high school, um, just, you know, wanting to be like a graffiti tagger and, you know, want to express myself that way. And as I matured and, and developed, so did he, um, you know, and uh, yeah, that's, that's where, it, where it comes from. Yeah, I love it. So you have the sculpture, the toy design, and you're using different materials, but then also you can you go to paint and canvas and everything like that. So how, when, when you're getting these ideas or when you're led to, to create, um, how do you decide what you're gonna be using? <laughs> so for me, I, I got this thing where it's like, uh, I call it like, it's why, why, the paint, why the paint drying. I gotta, find, I gotta have something to do. I, mm -hmm. I really can't, can't turn my mind off. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some people might read why the paint drying or something like that. It's, it's like it's like the seasons, you know. The seasons come and go; they change. Yeah. So sometimes it feel it feel better to do this during this time. You know, mm -hmm. it's cold. You know, you might 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 want to huddle up around a computer and do some digital mm -hmm. some digital work. You know, because you can't go outside and or the pandemic. You know, mm -hmm. different things like that. So for me, uh, where where one principle of art leave off in in a in a in the medium, another one picks up. Yeah. And and for me. Uh, I'm just a student of the game. I'm constantly learning, asking questions, um, talking to other artist friends. Um, just, you know, I just, just, just wanna, wanna learn and, and create. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I love what you're talking about, the, the spaces that, you in, that you're in, because um, I know art is very personal for you guys. I can only imagine you when you're busting out your iPad or yeah. when you're sitting in front of the canvas. Shawana, you have blessed Hilltop by just sitting in our upstairs space in Inglewood and busting. It was like very ritualistic, ceremonial almost. Um, so that brings me to your works, Earth Girls, which was created during uh, quarantine, March 2020, March 12th, 2020 to be exact. And I just want to say, Juana and I, we have a very special connection um, around this artwork because um, Hilltop had closed or was closed to the public. We were just doing online and delivery. And um, we still wanted to find a way to still brighten people's day. You know, people were still trying to carry on with their lives. We had this space where people were able to congregate and now lo no longer could do that. It's just like coming through and it just felt like a a dreary time and you know we didn't know what was going to happen and um Hasef introduced us and we talked about bringing you into the space but you were talking about that you were just working on these girls and i was like it's fine <laughs> just take your time yeah. You know? yeah. and when it's ready yeah. then we'll be able to share it and then we were able to share it a year to the date in Hilltop for the first time, and now this is year to the date yeah. being here. So that's such wow. a special story about your work. But oh, yes. yes. So share with us your process in starting Earth Girls. Um, well, my whole art, I've always been an artist. I was a little girl that always had a sketchbook, you know, but art was for me. It wasn't for anyone else. I could sell yeah. lipstick, bronzer, <laughs> candles, but art was my thing. It was very personal. And my friends that would come to my home would be like, you got so much art in here. If I was you, I would have everything on the wall. I'm like, no one's gonna touch my art. That's yeah. <laughs> my, it was like a journal entry, right? So when the world shut down, I was like freaking, I was freaking out. <laughs> and the one thing that came to me was art. 
heart was like, I've been here. I'm just waiting on you. Aww. And so I didn't have a lot of supplies, but I had been accumulating things, yeah. like some pencils and stuff. So I was just using whatever to keep my mind off of being locked up in the house. And I turned on my Instagram live because everyone was in, inside the house. Yeah. Everybody was locked in. Nobody, nobody knew what to do until D-Nice was like, let's party. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, everybody was trying to find out what to do. And I was like, well, I color, you know, so I can be the coloring version of him <laughs> doing music. So and I would. playlist <laughs> is super lit, though, when yeah. she's reading. And so I created this thing called Art and Chill. And so it was like, if you want to come over here, we're just listening to music and we're painting. And so the Earth Girls basically came about, I, this technique, I never knew what it was. It happened during a live, an Instagram live. I actually have a record. I was like, what am I making? What is this? <laughs> and then I painted a woman, and then the, the I, I'm actually dropping ink on paper. So I'm not using a brush, I'm just dropping ink, and it's kind of spreading the way it wants to. And they were making these forms of women, and I was like, this is us. Because like, yeah. what I was seeing was that when we were quarantined, we couldn't go to the salon, mm -hmm. couldn't get your nails done. Yeah. Everybody was like, girl, you know what? I don't even have a regimen anymore. This yeah. is how I look, this me. It was rough. It was and rough. we were starting to become really beautiful, though, yeah. because everything was being wiped out. And so right. I started to document, you know, I was scrolling through people's Instagram. I was like, oh, she's great, and, you know. I'd take a little sketch, and then at nighttime, I would just sketch. We would listen to music, and that's how Earth Girls became, because I felt like black women, we can, we can go anywhere. Mm. We can do anything. Mm -hmm. Everybody's watching what we do. Yeah, so we're right. watching everyone from this this planet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're gonna congregate to us. Mm -hmm. And so we can be full and bold and beautiful and strong during this time. Right. Because people were, they were looking for us. Yeah, absolutely. So that is how Earth Girls became a, a thing. You know, it was one, and then it was like, nah, you gotta paint it up. Like, I could not stop painting them. They were just coming every, but they were only on white paper. And then something made me go and start to paint the back, the backgrounds black. Mm. And then they just started to form into this yeah. universe. And now they just kind of sit in this world, yeah. slowly just kind of protecting what we were going through. And I had people asking to have a picture of them for their screensavers. Wow. So whatever they were doing, I just let them do it. That's my friend Melina. With the afro I was, over there. I didn't know that as much. And many yeah. times I've seen this, but I was literally just this right now. And I'm like, if you're my friend, you've been painted. Just know that. <laughs> Wait a minute, I ain't been painted yet. You uh, never know. You coming. You coming. You coming. Come yeah, on. yeah. So I just, you know, I, I guess I answered that. You know, it was yes. just the whole thing was surviving in color. Yes. What is yeah. your What is your thing, you know, that got you through this past year, two years? And mine was you have a pencil, you have paper. I had people learning how to paint with me. You know what I mean? Like, learn, like sitting with their paintings, like, girl, I never painted. Like, <laughs> look at what I'm doing, abstract art now. So we were finding community wow. in this time, right? Wow. We were all trying to figure out what our thing was. I think we got better. Right. Yeah, right. absolutely. I feel like we got stronger and yeah. we, we opened up our minds a lot more and yeah. we've allowed ourselves to receive and to put things out there and that's kind of it's kind of cool to sit with them. Thank you. Yes. And I want to go back in time a little bit because before you came into the space, I'm just thinking about black women holding space during a really tumultuous time. And a quote comes to mind um, in this documentary that I just recently watched that black women are the caretakers to society. And, um, and prior to your art being in, um, your work was in the space. Yeah. And your work, uh, the colors are just like, yeah. I, there's probably no way that you could <laughs> articulate, maybe there is, uh, how you select your color palette, but it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's like so invigorating, it's so inspiring, it just, it has this attitude and this, I don't know. It just makes you just feel like you could just say it with your chest. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's how you are. That's you. That's you. Yes. But prior to um, Shawana's work being in the space, we had some pieces in and, and we wanted to get some colorful themed. And the way that it ended up just kind of evolving her works in the space was we had your Black Statue of Liberty. Yeah. And then when George Floyd, you know, yeah. um, 
was was brutally murdered. Um, that was kind of there as like a, I don't know, it just felt like a little bit of peace of mind that yeah. we were gonna maybe be okay and be on the other side of it. But I want you to talk a little bit about how you select your color palette yeah. um, and then maybe some memories of your work being up in the space that time. Yeah, um, when it comes to color, like everyone's always asking me like, you know, where do you buy your paint? Like, why is your colors, why are they so bright? And I honestly, like, there's no special method or form. Like, I always feel like it's just like my energy kind of just going into things. I'm a very bright and bold and like in your face type person. So it just kind of like flows through me. But when it comes to my palette, you know, my objective when it came to art was, I feel like, when it comes to the black experience and when it comes to the black community, we have a lot of, you know, um, pain and just like challenges that were like handed down to us, you know? And usually when we release that and when we use outlets, a lot of times the work is a little darker, you know what I mean? It's a li like the package is heavy, you know, and, yeah. and rightfully so, you know, but when it came to um, my, per per my perspective and point of view, I always wanted to use bright colors because regardless, we're resilient. You yeah, know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. regardless of everything that was handed down to us, our lineages that we're cleaning up, our, you know, generational curses, just everything that we have on our belt, like, we're still resilient, we're still bright, we're still making moves, everyone's looking at us, we're the blueprint, we're the prototype. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I just felt like bright colors is like, this is a heavy message, you yeah. know? It's in a container that's bright though. It's, yeah. it's like people can look at this and, and see what we're going through, but in a way where it's like, but it's still bright, it's still living, it's mm -hmm. still vibrant, it's still going, you know? Because mm -hmm. we won't stop, we won't ever stop. Yeah. So when it came to my palette, I've always chose like really bright, like, you know, turquoise, pinks, and like I said, I study color theory a lot. Like, I love color theory, I love colors, I love putting colors together. If you have something on, I'm gonna remember your colors before I remember you. <laughs> like, I'm just a color girl, you know, like I love colors. So, when it comes to my palette, like, um, I just, my mind is like, as much color as possible. Like, <laughs> like anything that has to do with color. And when it came to Hilltop, you know, so many people like reached out to me and was like, you know, it's been so draggy. I feel like every day is like merging together. Like, I don't really know what's going on, but when I went and saw your work, it was just so happy, yeah. you know? And it was so bright and it was so like big. And even in my job, people are always like, Lauren, no matter what time it is, you're just there, you know? <laughs> like, so it just like worked out, you yeah. know? It just, it kind of like, it was a perfect timing, like divine timing it just really, really divine, divine timing was. did its thing like 1000%, so. It felt like a, it felt like your artwork was like a safety net. Like it just like, you know, at least for me, wanting to continue the programming that we had been doing, yeah. engaging our community, inspiring our community. It just really just came at the perfect time. But you said something about um, the container that the art comes in, yeah. you know, and it being this bright um, messaging, but it's, um, it's still a heavy, I mean, it's a bright color container, yeah. but the messaging is heavy. Yes. And I wanna talk about a little bit about your influence with hip hop, because we know yes. hip hop is very similar. Absolutely. So yeah. how do you draw inspiration from hip-hop as well well when I create I'm, I'm not a TV person I, I, I watch TV but like I'm not a TV person I'm a music person mm -hmm. like I want to create some music you yes. know like I love jazz I love hip-hop which to me they're all synonymous you know yeah. but my process is hip-hop like I love music hip-hop R&B I embody it from a young age I've always been into hip-hop and R&B like I was I was you know thankful at a young age to be just into, it was, it's really crazy how young I was into music. Like it, it's mind blowing now that I think about it. <laughs> but um, that's my process, you know, and anything that's, I'm, I'm a very, I'm a very transparent, transparent person. I like to things to flow through me. I like to just be able to release. So um, anything that's there is gonna come out. Mm -hmm. So if I'm listening to music, like it's gonna come out, it's gonna show. I don't know how to retain things. You know what I mean? Like I'm just an expressive person. So 
when it comes to like my process of listening to music and just like being so, you know, hip hop culture based, you know, the way I dress, you know, the things I love, the people that I admire and I adore, my inspiration, you know, like I said, I didn't grow up in like an art home, you know, I never really had like art influences, like all minds are music, you know, yeah. so, you know, when it comes to, it's like my ritual, you know, it's my ritual is like putting music on, finding a dope playlist, you know, letting that just flow and just everything flow through me with colors and music, like it's like a little like sub world that yeah. I have, yeah. yeah. I love it. Okay, so we're wrapping up here. Um, I just wanted to ask one more question, Neff, because I feel like being able to hear from all the perspectives of the artists and where they're drawing their art from, um, we touched on it a little bit when you were speaking about what On Black meant, but I just wanted to talk about your personal connection with all of these artists and how we're seeing it in the space today with your journey. Yeah, like I think for me, like as a curator, I think the process of curating is so, having an event production background, having a management background, development, event production, I mean, curation is, 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 is intense. But one thing that I can say for me, I'm very intentional about how I curate. I'm very intentional about everything that I do. Even the artists that I connect with and everything like that. Like, even, I didn't know Joseph Brandon from a can of paint. <laughs> He was at a studio visit of one, of uh, of shows art, That's and right. he was like, "Yes, such and such told me about you six months ago, but I told them I'm a Mia when it's wow. right." Yep. So, uh, my list of artists for this show, none of these people, none of them were on it, but Spirit knew that this was supposed to happen. Yeah. Like Tara, me and Tara, I met Tara when I first moved to LA six years ago. She's one of the first people that I met. She did an amazing event. Um, you know, we saw Moonlight. It was just like this amazing just synergy of, of, of people connecting and having this dialogue and conversation. And so that's what this was about. You know, the fact that, you know, Lauren knows people from Chicago that I know, like yes. all of this was just synergy. You know, um, shows are like his work, just the, just the background of his work and what it means. And just, you know, um, Beauty and the Beast. Mm. Like, yeah. That piece, when I walked into that man's studio, let me tell y'all, <laughs> I was like, bruh, yes. Like, this speaks to us as black women. You know, we, we grow, we're looked at as these adult women before we are adults. You know, we, we, are, we are the nurturers. We are the protectors, the builders. The fact that she's on that back, that hyena's back, and ain't a sense of fear in her eyes. Mm. And we move through without having like the things that we go through. And like, it's just the, oh my gosh. Like when I had my studio visit with him virtually, the pieces, he created a piece just for this show called Creativity. And the, the, the nuances of trauma. And that's the final step of creativity. And that's what this is. He didn't know I had just gone through a hu humongous traumatic experience. And he had a piece that showed the frequency of, of that traumatic experience that I had gone through. Like, synergy, spiritual, like there was nothing, like what I thought I wanted, what I thought I was supposed to do for this show as a curator, it was like, no, universe, Father, Mother, God, Oshun said, nope, this is what you're gonna do. You know, and so it's just, you know, as that in my vision and what I wanna do within this space and even with Chantel's work, mm -hmm. um, she's based out of New York, but her show, she was a part of a show. Um, she's with uh, Art Lead Her. And so I saw her work, I believe it was last October. And I told her rep her representation, like, I need her work in, in this show on this black wall. It's going to speak volumes. And this piece right here really spoke volumes to me as a black woman. Like, we, I have salon PTSD. What am I trying to <laughs> No. Yo, bro. Let me tell y'all. Yo. Yo. <laughs> Yo, 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 let me tell you. Like, one of my clients is a celebrity hairstylist, and she tells this story all the time. She was like, yeah, uh, like, I have, so I have salon PTSD, but when I look at this, it makes me, it takes me back to those days of being, my mom didn't play. We was at the salon every week, every Friday. Like, no joke. And my mother's name is Rapunzel. Oh, and wow. her hair 
was down her back. Wow. So I'm in the salon for six out six plus hours. And so and she used to get French rolls and, and all of this type of stuff. And so when we looked at this and when I wanted styles like this, it was ghetto. It was like we can't do this. But now we see these things. People are wearing this stuff on Met, on the Met Gala. Yeah. You know, nah, this is come fashion on. now. Yeah. It's avant garde now. But when mm -hmm. we were doing it, it was it was told like, no, that's yep. not you need to straighten your hair. You need to be acceptable, you need to be approachable. And so this piece right here shows us in elegance, no matter what, no matter what our hair looks like, no matter what we look like. And so these this work and what this is, this is literally like just this is our lives. All of yeah. these pieces are meaningful. You know, this piece over here. You know, of shows art, him tying the vulnerability of him with his son, tying his son's shoes, but then the reality of life on the side. That is true to the point of the reality of what we have to go through as black as black men and black women. So so yeah, so it's just it's this right here and this time and where we are, we are better together than we are apart. It is for us to build, you know just community with each other and we're on this journey of of our blackness and what that means to us and accepting and because before blackness was seen to be as a vice or this negative thing if it wasn't a a, a, a crisp black suit or or a nice black dress it was seen as like not okay or we had to you know diminish it or demean it for each other and so this is my way of saying you know we have ownership of this wow. we have accountability of this we work together in order for us to be able to just just build through this of our blackness and what that means for us and we all have that journey and we're continuing to go on that journey so i just want us to continue to think about that and before i close i want you guys to all like you know we have our catalogs and everything but i want to read a quote that my board president, after that, that comment was, was, was told to me about the black walls. And I'm a huge fan of Zora Neale Hurston. And he found this quote for me and was like, Neff, like this is, and it just resonated for me. And so it says, I feel most colored when I'm thrown against a sharp white background. I am a rock, a dark rock surged upon and overswept, but through it all, I remain myself. Mm -hmm. And that's by Zora Neale Hurston. And so what she, what she spoke about, like as a sociologist, as an anthropologist, you know, just talking about just how we move through spaces, black people, um, you know, sociology, like how we go and talk through, you know, human nature and experience. Like that's what this is about. You know, we're constantly thrown in this, in this sense of the space, but this space is for us. And I made this for you guys. And this was for y'all. Awesome. And thank you so much, thank like you. for allowing me thank to you. use your art as my vision. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you as my voice. So I appreciate it. So in closing, I just want you guys to share where we can find your art. If you have anything that you're working on that we could be on the lookout for. I know artists don't like to be pressured into making art. So, um, but I do know that I'm sure if people don't know you already, they want to be able to follow your work and see your journey um, and see themselves. So Lauren, go ahead. Um, I'm working on a lot of different things. I'm, I honestly, I'm a ball of all kinds of things. Like I work on plant pods, fashion, digital art, canvas art. Like I'm always doing something in different mediums. My tags on Instagram are Lauren underscore Levi and Lauren Levi underscore art. And yeah, that's me. She's always creating. Always. Always, <laughs> yes. Juana. Um, I'm currently on view at Hilltop Inglewood. Yep. Upstairs, um, it's my abstract art. First time doing abstract. Um, six pieces up there. Mm -hmm. nice. I have a show coming up at, I'm going to show my Andre 3000 paintings at oh, nice. Comfort LA. Um, amazing. That's amazing. It's an homage to Andre 3000 called yeah. Flowers for Andre and that'll be coming up soon. And you can find me on Instagram at Be Beautiful LA. And uh, I have a solo show coming up in August at the RDFA Gallery called Where There's Smoke. So um, you could check me out on uh, Instagram at Joseph Brandon Art. And um, I'll be doing a really quick tour of my all work before I leave. If anyone in interested, about 10 minutes. So uh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you everybody for coming out and supporting us, um, supporting what we're trying to do here. Please tell your friends and your family about 
SOLA and what we're doing here. If anybody has any questions. Yeah, if anybody has any questions. Does yeah. anybody have any questions for the artist before we wrap? All right. People have been standing for a long time. Yeah. You can mix and mingle, and we can do our thing. Thank yeah. you so much, everybody. And again, thank you to our sponsors and partners. Apartment 2B, Liquid Dad, Apartment Wednesday. Go drink. Yes. <laughs>